Welcome back to our devotions in the book of Proverbs, stopping by in Proverbs chapter 30, verses one, honestly through the whole chapter, but we're going to just cover a first couple beginning verses because we're just going to outline what we can really see in this chapter that actually has a lot of imagery, but a lot of wisdom that we can take and even apply into our own lives. Verse one, the sayings of Agur, son of Jake, an inspired utterance, this man's utterance to Ithiel. I am weary, God, but I can prevail. Surely I am only a brute, not a man. I do not have human understanding. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I attained the knowledge of the Holy One, who has gone up to heaven and come down, who hands have gathered up the wind, who have wrapped up the waters in a cloak, who has established all the ends of the earth. What is his name and what is the name of his son? Surely you know. And so we're going to stop there because really what will do is kind of journey a little bit through the entire chapter. Uh, but I definitely want you guys to check this out for yourselves. There's a lot here that I think you could potentially overlook because the first thing that comes to mind is who in the world is a girl? Who is Ithiel? And what in the world does this have to do with the theme of the book of Proverbs? And more importantly, how can I even apply it into my life? And it's kind of questions that even I had as I was journeying through this book. Agur, seemingly, according to commentaries, either another name for Solomon or an entire different person from Solomon who shared utterances that he collected over time from pieces of wisdom that was given to him. And Ithiel, who is someone else that he's speaking to in this process. Here's the outline that Agur gives us that I think we can find as we read this text and apply it into our lives. Number one, he has a confession of faith. He does a few things, acknowledging his own ignorance and foolishness and ultimately admitting that he needs a savior. He needs God. And he's humbly stepping out of his own way to get to this wisdom that he's seeking for, which opens up the next transition in the beginning verses of this chapter, him acknowledging God, him actually choosing to fear the Lord and submit himself under the authority of God, who has gathered up the wind, who has wrapped up the waters in cloak, his name and the name of his son, all these things that are hinting prophetically in some case scenario to the coming of Christ, but also simply to God. And then furthermore, in the very next verse admits that the word of God is flawless. And this is a choice, a confession to submit to God. So first, let's recognize that there was a necessity for Agur to get out of his own way, to humbly admit his ignorance, his lack, his foolishness, not knowing everything and only being human. That opened up a way for him to then be able to acknowledge who God is and furthermore, submit his life to the God of Israel, choosing to follow after his word and principle, which then opens us up to the rest of the book as follows with a list of three or four that's continuously repeated. That just simply gives us a list that's exhausted and not limited to of things that a girl finds unsatisfactory, unbearable, small but wise, too wonderful for him to fully grasp, that is pleasant or calmly, and a few details to end this chapter on what's foolish or self-exalting. And in each stanza, in each description, he just gives more and more imagery. For the things that are unsatisfactory, he points to a grave or a barren womb. Things that just continue, continue, continue to absorb, continue to consume, and there's never a point where enough is enough. The things that are unbearable, like a hateful woman who finds a spouse and some descriptions there. The things that are small and yet are wise, like an ant that reveals wisdom and preparation. Locusts, who have no leadership and yet advance in ranks, and even a spider that wisely uses its skills and abilities to go anywhere, even in a king's palace. Even examples of things that are too wonderful for him to fully grasp, like a ship's way of a sea that leaves no traces, or even a man's love for a woman. These things that are open navigations and in some cases have mystery to them that can be enjoyed in proper right context. And of course, the pleasant and the foolish self-exalting having their own descriptions too. And even with all of these descriptions that are granted, the outline that Agur gives us, with these images, these depictions, all center on this format. We must be willing to get out of our own way, our own selfish ambitions, selfish wills, selfish wants. And in that process, admitting that not only we are limited in our knowing, but are ignorant 
to the divine things that ought to lead us to the feet of God, who is the ultimate creator of all things around us. And it is through acknowledging him, having and gaining the fear of the Lord, that we are then able to obtain righteousness, wisdom, and truth in our lives. And it is all contingent upon our desire for righteousness, our desire for his wisdom, and ultimately to have the kingdom revealed in us. And even through the wisdom that he's picking up from his surroundings, Agur too is being transformed inwardly with the wisdom he's gaining coming to life in a way that fulfills him with gratitude, growth, fulfillment, opening his eyes to wisdom that is all around him that ultimately in some way, shape or form reveals the person, character of God. And in many ways, that is something that we can see in our own way of life, being present and available in the life that is in front of us, not being too consumed to getting to a certain destination, getting to a certain place, or wishing we had all that we wanted in the moment, but acknowledging that where we are now is not only filled with wisdom and life, is filled with opportunity for us to be transformed inwardly as well. Through the lens of truth, through the lens of wisdom, through the lens of a life that is submitted to Christ, a life that is fulfilled, a life that is grateful, a life that is worth enjoying and living, a life that is planted in places of truth, all stemming from our willingness to get out of our own way, submitting to God, pursuing after his heart. And the life that is gained in the nuances of the writing that Agur presents to us seems to reveal the life of a student that constantly submits his life to God under the fear of the Lord, resting in Christ. And what is this life that's seemingly gained in this picture may possibly follow these things. A life that lives in balances and not extremes. A life that finds satisfactory in God while at the same time seeing the things outside of God that leaves one unsatisfied. A life that is filled with mystery and yet can still be enjoyed. A life that not only acknowledges the unbearable things that the environment and life can bring, but also being willing to not become unbearable ourselves by way of refraining from such foolishness. A life that learns from the small things, continuously looking to add value to your life. A life that is pleasant and willing to lead by example in righteous boldness and simply living humbly before God in our everyday life. And to wrap this all up at the end of Proverbs 30, suggest to us a life that consists of us making the decision to suppress our own passions and not desire to provoke the passions of others, choosing to live as peaceably among all men as possible and not stirring strife among others around us. So what can we really digest from this chapter that's filled with picture, filled with imagery, and filled with some very intriguing writing that seems off course from the book of Proverbs in totality, I would say the message that is conveyed is to step out of our own way humbly, submitting our lives to Christ, receiving true wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord, and gaining access to a life where we are fulfilled, where we can be present in and simply enjoy, even in the midst of mystery, unsatisfactory, and even unbearable circumstances and environments that we're surrounded by in life under the sun. And while all of that is taking place, still being transformed inwardly by being present enough in our today where we are, being humble enough to know that there is still things to learn and to grow in, seeking after the heart of God. So in all, humbly step out of your own way, submit to Christ, and allow life to unfold for you in a way you may have never seen it before and in a way that will only enrich your life for the better in wisdom, in righteousness, in mystery, and in truth. And that's what I currently think Proverbs chapter 30 could potentially offer us applicably. I appreciate you guys all so much for tuning into this video. If you like this kind of content and want to see more, subscribe, like this video, share with a friend who could benefit from hearing an interesting devotional such as this. And until our next conversation, be easy and be breezy, my friend. Peace.